Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we have seen how we can create an end-to-end -end flow where I can ingest the data from source to branch and from branch to silver. We also looked into this like how we can handle the bad records, right? Using data quality, okay? Now in this video, I want to derive this entire notebook or entire flow with the help of metadata. Okay. So let's suppose there are two different type of files. One is race. Okay. And the second one is circuit, the one which we use. Okay. Both are different schema, different data quality rules, different transformations. Okay. Same way, in circuit we have schema, then DQ, and then transformations, and maybe other flows, right? Maybe some additional transformation or changes, depends, okay? So what I want now is that my notebook should run based on the different type of files I have, okay? And this execution should be in parallel. Okay, so as soon as I run my pipeline, it should start ingesting the data for races as well as for circuit in parallel. Okay, I, I should not use another notebook just for the ingestion process. Okay, that's what I want to do now. Now, how to handle it, right? So, to handle it, I have used Azure SQL. Okay, you can use some other templates if you want but i'll give you an idea like why i used it okay so as of now as i said i have two files okay so i have created two tables out of it one is to handle the schema okay and the first one is to handle the information related to the source systems or source information okay so i'll say source file kind of information okay this is one table now in this table, I will be storing the file name, file name as in like the source, like the races here, okay, or you can say circuit. Then I will store the path, where exactly the location is, where exactly these files are. Then I'll store scheme, uh, then I'll store DQ rules, okay, for both. So basically I will be having two entries in my metadata table each for each of the file okay now since i since i want both the files to run in a in a in a parallel okay so i what i have done i have created one group id okay to group these feeds basically or to group this source files so let's say the group is three okay maybe you can include five more different type of files in the same group or maybe you can create another group so I will be dividing my source files based on some group IDs. Okay. So let's say there are four files for which I want uh, the pipeline to run every 30 minutes. Or for these group IDs, I want my pipeline to run every six hours. Right. Depending on the requirement. So I have grouped those feeds or group those source systems. I will be grouping those source systems and I'll be running the pipeline in that context. Okay. That is the idea. Now, each file have some schema, right? So that schema will be mapped here, okay, based on the source system ID or basically the source file ID, okay? And this schema will be derived from this table on the fly, okay? So now you have everything will be parameterized using this Azure SQL. Now let me show you how exactly I have created in the SQL, okay? So, if you see here, these are the two tables. One is source metadata, okay? If I run this, if you see, I have source two source files, right? And two IDs corresponding to them. Then the path, where exactly the files or the source files are present. Then the file format, if you want to run it or not, you can drive based on true or false. 
which delimiter you are using right as of now it's comma i am not using it but later on if you are using some other delimiter you can use this column then source header if you have it or not i have added some more columns as well if required like partition id and then the data qualities right circuit id is not null or the name is not null and then transformations if you have some transformations you can add it over here and you can call it if you have any doubts you can drop it in the, in the into the comment section i'll, I'll definitely try to uh, explain right if there is any confusion these are the options source file options if you have seen the previous video you must be aware like what are these and how i'm using it and these are the tables which i'm gonna create right the table names the dlt table names how i'll be driving different type of table names like bronze or silver and all you can see there i'll show you the notebook as well what acid i'm using and this is the group id right and sequence by based on the file process date and that's it not much same way i have another table where i am just storing the column names if you see okay corresponding to each data id source metadata id which we have seen here three or four i have created a foreign key obviously you can say or the primary key linking okay so this is for three this is my schema for three and this is the schema for four bottom one and the data type as well as the column order that's it not much so this is how i have created two uh, basically tables okay now i'll show you the notebook what i have done okay if i try to create this notebook or in in the recording part itself it will gonna take time so i have done it in advance okay I'll just quickly show you guys. Day three. Okay. So if you remember, I I will what I'll do. I'll open day one code as well, the one which I've written uh, in my previous video. Okay, so that you can correlate it. Okay. Day one. Okay. So in day one also you can see. First of all, I'm importing the files, and then creating the schema and the cloud file options were given, right? So here, if you see, I am importing the required libraries, and then I have created one function to connect to my SQL database. That is okay, right? And this is a function which I have created, which will generate the schema on the fly, right? Where I am giving the mappings, and then I am basically creating a schema out of it. So what it will do? It will create this schema, okay? Based on the based on the data which we have present in these columns, right? column data type column name and column order so if i show you in the sql see column name column date type column order these are the three columns i have given right and the same columns i have given here and based on these column values i am deriving my schema on the fly okay now once the schema is done i have the schema with me with this with this function so if you remember i'm just if you can see i am just creating this function i am not calling it as of now you can create this function in a helper file as well and you can reuse it if you want okay so it is up to you how you want to modularize your code and how you want to reuse it okay now this is my main function sorry this is my main function delta ingestion metadata function okay where i will be passing one row and the schema and if you see based on this row i am fetching all this information like table name checks the data quality checks it will give you the string i am just converting into the dictionary okay using json dot load keys i am fetching sequence by file path cloud file options and the dq rules so if you remember the same thing we have done here also this is the cloud file option this is the path right and then you have dq checks here checks the one which i have written there and then the table name and you have key columns sequence by right all these things are there so what i am doing here in the main function i am fetching all this information from this row okay we'll see in the bottom how i am getting this row from the database and then on the fly if you see i am not hard coding the table name now i am saying branch dot load dot table name and the table name will be coming from the db itself source table name okay so when so when it will start running it will get the table name from this table 
this one source table name circuit and race id right corresponding to these metadata id we will we'll see that same goes for all these informations all these uh, metadata values basically or all these parameters now if you see i am creating a branch table the same code i have written here also right it just that everything is being uh, everything i am trying to fetch it from the db itself and once our branch load is done i am creating a silver load okay in the same way again there is nothing new the same code it is the one which i have created in the day one if you see so if you have any doubt you can check the previous video it will give you more idea okay this dq check the filter and everything it is there okay and then once your stage load is done you will actually creating the silver load using apply changes right the keys the table name sequence by and all right these all information you have in the table so earlier it was all hard coded right circuit id file process date table name and everything and then you are actually creating the error table right again same thing nothing new see so now what i have done is i have added all these functions in this particular function all all these uh, different type of layers right and so once it is done now i am creating my query i am saying run or fetch all the information against this group id group id 3 now even we can parameterize this value as well okay so run time you can parameterize this value let's say suppose first time you want your pipeline to run for 3 you can pass it 3 i will i'll show you how you can do that okay and then df you are creating a data frame out of it using the execute jdbc query the one which we have uh, the function which we have created okay and based on this data frame if you see i am creating a row and I'm fetching one of the information and I'm running the ID to get the schema using source schema table. Once I have the schema with me, once I have the row with me, I'm passing those information in the ingestion metadata function, the same function which I have just shown you. Okay. It will get this information and it will run your code. Let me show you the running code. So I already run one time so that it won't take much time, but let me run it again. I'll do a fresh load and see, this is the notebook day three end to an ingestion process. Okay. So it won't wait for the resources. As I said, I have already run it one time. So I'm running it again and you will see how it is actually executing the ingestion process for both the files in parallel you didn't did anything for the parallel execution if you see you are just running a for loop so ideally it should be sequential right but dlt is intelligent enough since there is no dependency it will run both the files for both the files it will run the ingestion process as in parallel okay and you will see the flow chart as well for both of them so it's setting up the tables So it will take, I think, one minute or so, and it will work. So the only missing, okay. So if you see, one is for races, one is for circuit. And for both of them, see, it loaded different type of records. Now it's loading error and the stage. And then now it will load the silver, actual silver table. Okay. So if you see, it's running in the parallel. I didn't did anything to run this execution in panel or how to drive this metadata or how to drive this DLT in panel. Okay. So that's how you can create a metadata completely data driven DLT pipelines. Okay. The only two missing pieces are here is one is this group ID. You might be thinking like how to get this group ID or every time change the notebook. No, you don't have to do it. In the pipeline, there is an option. This option, right? Advanced. I was trying to create some parameters also in, in one of the another video, but there is no need. We can delete it. Instead of driving this all values from here, you just need to pass one value that is group ID. 
okay this group id you can say at configuration group id and you can pass the value let's say 3 now what i'll do i'll change this group id in my notebook i will say get this information from the from the uh, pipeline itself okay so no need to hard code it then i'll write it here spark.config dot get my bad dot get and then you can pass this information here this group id okay and uh, you can hold this information as a group let's say group id okay and now it will give you the group id which is uh, which will be passed from the pipeline itself okay let's say three right and save this and this group id i need to pass it here right so what i'll do is format it. And I will say instead of this group ID. That's it. Okay. So if you see now, I'm passing the group ID also from the pipeline itself, right? So no need to hard code this in the notebook as well. Let's try to run it. Let's see if it works. Now it won't take much time now because resources are there. It will just take time to setting up the tables. So it started uh, setting up the tables. Let's see now how it works. But this is the way basically you want. You can parameterize end to end the DLT and you can set up. So see if it's working now. So no need to change your notebook at any time. And this is how you can work on your ingestion okay for the dlt now in the next video i will try to show you guys how you can do different type of settings in the pipeline okay so i will talk about how you can handle trigger mode continuous mode and all right if you have any question related to this metadata ingestion please ping me please uh just drop me the comments i'll try to answer as much as i can thanks thanks for watching this video i hope this video will be helpful for you guys thank you